Pastor Lau and Pastor Dala Haprasit would like to welcome you to the following message from New Hope International Church in Seattle, Washington. Here is Pastor Lau's anointed teaching that will change your life with love, hope, and peace in Jesus Christ. And now, Pastor Lau. Are you ready for the Word of God? Amen. I want to confirm again that God loves you so much, and He wants to bless you. He wants you to be victorious. He wants you to be the conqueror. He wants you to be a victor, not the victim. He wants you to live in this life, not being a defeated person, but he wants you to be a blessing to the nation. So our church believes that God has the plan for each and every one of us, the plan to prosper us, the plan for the future. And we are not going to live in this world being under, but being over. Amen? We're going to be the head, not the tail. We're going to be above, not beneath. Because we have the great God who is on our side. Today, I would like to talk more about ruling and reigning with Christ. The title of this sermon is Freedom from Condemnation. And I know that I will not be able to finish this sermon for today. But I will continue maybe three times, four times. I learned one thing is that preaching is not just trying to shuffle the information into people, but it's to make sure that you get the message home and you will be able to practice what you learn and you will remember the message and will get into your spirit. So I'm going to go slowly to make sure that you can understand what God say regarding condemnation. Why we are talking about condemnation? Because condemnation robs your victory. Because condemnation will block you from being ruling and reigning in life. Let's look at some scripture here. I'm going to read the scripture. I'm a teacher, so I love to teach the Word of God. My style is to teach the Bible, not just preaching the Bible. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 to 10. Before we read that scripture, follow what I say. Satan, Satan. sins, Sins. death, Death. condemnation, Condemnation. the flesh. flesh. So all this word you're going to see in all this scripture is on one side. How about God? Righteousness, Righteousness. justification, Justification. forgiveness, Forgiveness. ruling and reigning. The grace of God. All these terms are on the other side. So we have two things here in life that we need to deal with every single day. Satan, sin, death, condemnation, confidence, righteousness, grace, power. And I believe that you want to choose the right side, not the first side. So when I read the scripture, you're going to see all this word come up again, pop up again and again from the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 5 verses 8 to 10. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners. Talk about sin. Is that right? Sinners. Christ died for us. Much more than having now. Everyone say now. We are not talking about the future. We are talking about now, in Christ Jesus, today, in this life, having been justified, which means having been made righteous by His blood. What makes us righteous? The blood of Jesus. So we are now righteous. We shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Jesus Christ came and died for us so that we can have His life. We were sinners and we were condemned to death. Death ruled over our life before we were born again. But now, by the death of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, we 
have been justified. We have been made righteous. Or we are the saint. Everyone turn to each other and say, you are the saint. You are righteous people. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been made righteous. And the word righteous is related to the word condemnation because it's opposite. Romans chapter 5 verses 11 to 17. And not only that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have now. Everyone say now. now. It's not in heaven. Now. Receive the reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, because of Adam, sin entered the world, death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. If you look at the newspaper today, look at the news today, everywhere, you can see the evidence and the consequences and the effect of death. People kill each other. People go into the school, shoot each other, divorce, adultery. People have a lot of problems on earth here, all forms of death, because sin entered the world. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. I will explain this later on. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. When we were sinners before we were born again, death reigned over our life. We were slaves. We were under the control of Satan. Satan is the god of death. He is giving death to people. So we were under the influence of death. We were not ruling and reigning at all. We were under his hand, his thumb. We were controlled by him. From Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned, according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift, what is the free gift? Righteousness. The righteousness is the free gift. You don't have to pay. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to do anything with it. You just received. It's not like the offense. If by the one man offense, many died. Again, sin, death. Much more, the grace of God. And the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. You can see again, sin. Satan deceived Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned. And what followed? Death, rule, and reign. And what else? Condemnation. People feel condemned, feel guilty on the inside. But we are not in that mode anymore. We are not on that side anymore. But we, on which side? But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification, mean righteousness. For if by one man offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the, of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. How many people are saved in this room? You are a born-again believer. Raise your hand up. Amen. If you are a born-again believer, you can live in the abundance of grace. And also, you received the gift of righteousness. Amen? And this is for today, now. Not in heaven, not in the future. Now, we have been justified or made righteous. Now, we can receive the gift of righteousness. So, in order to reign in life, we need to learn how to operate in the area of the grace and the area of the gift of righteousness. And the thing that opposite the gift of righteousness is we call condemnation. If you feel guilty, you feel that you are not pure and clean, you are a guilty person, you cannot rule and reign in life. You will be defeated. Amen? I want to review a little bit. That according to the Bible, God already ordained Adam and Eve or predestined Adam and Eve or gave them dominion to be able to rule and reign on this earth. Ruling and reigning in this earth is the original plan of God. Amen? 
I give you example. When I woke up a few days ago, I felt a little bit of a cold. My throat was sore, and I have a little bit of fever. I have two choices: I yielded to that cold, or I say I'm gonna rule and reign, and this is not for me because I'm a child of God. I have a choice to let the cold reign over me, or I have a power of God, the grace of God, and the gift of righteousness to reign over the cold. So I began to exercise my authority. I began to rule and reign, like what God gave to Adam and Eve, that He's gonna reign on earth here. What did I do? I began to decree. I began to command my body. I began to tell virus or whatever that touch me right now, you have to leave my body. I'm flying to Asia. I cannot cough on the airplane. I don't want to take antibiotics. You have to go in the name. Of Jesus Christ, Amen. I'm getting better every day. No more fever in only two days. So I have to make decision to reign and rule in my life. And God give this world for us to rule and reign. In Psalm 115 verse 16, the heaven and the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth He has given to the children of men. God wants us to rule and reign in life. In this world, so that is the original plan of God. But unfortunately, Adam and Eve sinned against God. They sold their dominion, their authority to the devil. And after they sinned, after Adam and Eve sinned, what happened? Satan took over, and then death reigned in the world. But thank Jesus, thank you, Lord. He took that back 2,000 years ago, and he gave that authority back to the church. We are not regular people like people outside the church and people who don't know Christ. We are kings who reign on earth here. Let's turn to each other and say, "You are a king. You reign on earth here." Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When we talk about ruling and reigning. God did His part already. God sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay for our sin, and on the cross there is an exchange that our sin was put on Him to make Jesus sin, and then He exchanged to us. He gave us the gift of righteousness. You give some bad thing to somebody, and that person give good things to you. There is an exchange on the cross. It was done 2,000 years ago. We just received this gift of righteousness by faith. We didn't earn it. We didn't do anything with it. Jesus did it for us. But in the daily life, we still make decision every single day to work with that gift of righteousness and to let God rule and reign in our life. You cannot rule and reign in this life without submitting to the authority, ruling authority of God. You need to submit to Him. This is a principle of the kingdom of heaven. If you want to have authority, you need to submit to another authority. Is that right? For example, if the police officer doesn't submit to the American government, then he will not have authority anymore. He will have authority only when he submit to the law of the nation. The same thing. If we want to rule and reign, we need to submit to God. And in order to submit to God, there is a practicality here. Look at Romans chapter six, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, do not let sin. This Bible is talking to Christian like us. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust, and do not present your members, mean your body. As instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Later on in this sermon, I will explain about the word grace and the word law, so that you know how to work with the grace. Yes, we are righteous by the righteousness of God. We have been made righteous, and we can rule and reign in life. But at the same time, 
We need to make choice every single day to let this body to be an instrument of righteousness, because God gives us the freedom of choice. This morning, I make a choice to come to the church, not to the casino. I have freedom to f- drive myself to casino and k a c h i n g k a c h i n g k a c h i n g and play gamble. But I don't use my hand to do that. I rather use my hand to lay hand on the sick and bless people. Amen. So it's a choice every single day as the saints of God to allow our body to be an instrument of righteousness. And thank God, we don't do that out of the law. What is the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament? Apostle Paul say, "For you are not under the law, but under grace." What does it mean? I, I believe a lot of Christians, when they read this scripture, they what? What does it mean? Under law, under grace. What does it mean to me today in a practical point? This is a practical point. In the Old Testament, God give them the Ten Commandments. God give them the book, and say, "This is right and wrong. You know it. You obey it. That's it." You have to do what the law say. If you break the law, you're guilty. You may be stoned to death. You will be punished. That is the law, and definitely God gave them the way out from sin by killing animals and shed the blood of animal once a year to cleanse all the sin of the nation through the animal. But we are not under the law. We are under grace. Should we know the law? Yes, we should know the law. And we will read the scripture later on in this series of sermon why we should know the law. But we are under grace, which means that God gives us the Helper. His name is the Holy Spirit. His name is the Spirit of Grace. We don't obey the law by our own strength, by our own ability, but the Spirit of the Lord is in us. He gives us the power. To be able to be what He wants us to be, to be holy, and He gives us the power, the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. That is grace, the Spirit of grace, to be able to obey the law. I mentioned on Friday night when the hand is in the glove. I'm a surgeon, so I always use this example or analogy. When my hand is in the glove and my index finger move, the glove move. So the glove moved according to what the hand moved. The same principle: when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, that grace inside of you will move you to be able to use your instrument or your body for righteousness. So, as Christian in the New Testament church, it's much easier to obey the law because we have the grace, the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Amen. That's why our church believe in the touch of the Holy Spirit. I look at the touch of the Holy Spirit like surgery. Two days ago, one of my patients got wound infection, and he become septic. His blood pressure went down. He was dying. So what I need to do as a surgeon, I need to open that wound, suck the pus out, the infection. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about as a medical doctor. I suck the infected tissue out, the infected clot, and then I irrigate the wound with clean water. And we give antibiotics, go into the bloodstream to kill bacteria. And this analogy, the same thing with human being in the spiritual way. The Holy Spirit, the fire, is like a surgeon. He come in supernaturally, powerfully to cut off the junk in your life. That's why, if you notice, you go to the church that the Holy Spirit is moving. There is less sin in the church, less fighting, gossiping, division, less problem, less divorce, less you no know, husband and wife fighting each other. All these things less and less because Holy Spirit come in to pull the pus out, pull the infected clot out, pull the tumor out, and then He put clean water, clean it up, and He give antibiotic. 
to energize us, so that when we get out of the hospital, we can be functioning and effective again. Amen. So that's the work of the Holy Spirit is to sanctify, to purify, and to help us to be able to walk under the grace, not under the law. Law is just a paper, but grace is a person, and that is the Holy Spirit. Grace is the person. Amen. So the Bible said that if you yield yourself, you r member to sin, you became slave to sin. So the principle is we need to make a decision every single day to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, not to let or allow our body to be the instrument of unrighteousness or sin. Romans chapter 6, 15 to 18. Last night my wife said, "Why lately you teach so heavy subject? <laughs> Why don't you teach something?" Fun, laughing a little bit more, because people look very serious here. And I told my wife, "Too bad. <laughs> I need to teach the Bible. I'm not here to be a joker or a comedy to make you laugh. I need to teach the truth." Really, last night I still read my sermon around 1 a.m. and she said. Why you look so serious and you look so burdened about this sermon? It's a, it's a tough subject to teach about sin and about. <laughs> Why don't you just teach something that people can laugh and have fun? No, just she's just teasing me. What then shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? So now we are under grace in the Holy Spirit. Why should we sin? Certainly not. Do you not? Know that to whom you present yourself slave to obey, you are the one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slave to sin, were is a past tense, yet you obey from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and have we been set free from sin. You became slave to righteousness. In other words, this is my decision every single day. I don't serve the devil. I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't serve sin. I serve righteousness. Do I have temptation to sin? Yes, I have temptation to sin every single day. But I make a decision every single day to serve the Lord and righteousness. Is my choice every single day. Many times in our life, we let the devil use our mouth to be his instrument to destroy somebody. Something come in our mind, we just say it, and then, who? I'm sorry. It make you mad, make you upset, and this is why divorce happen when a husband. Doesn't control his mouth and say something bad to the wife, or doesn't control his body and start to commit adultery. Satan cannot do anything on earth if no one yields to him. Satan will be just like a person who stand behind a thick glass and yell, a thick glass, you know, and yell, but people just don't listen to him and just ignore him. And just walk around, and he still stand behind a thick glass, and no one just listen, just ignore him. But in reality, many people, including church people, are not ignoring the devil. They listen to the devil, they yield to the devil thoughts, they think the devil's thought, they say what the devil want to say, they cooperate with the plan of the devil, and the devil will love it something. Maybe somebody offend you in the church, step on your toes, and the devil will come and talk to you. Oh, leave the church! They are bad people. You listen to the devil, then what happened? You yield to the devil, and when you yield to the devil, you yield your body as an instrument of unrighteousness. You need to say every single day. You need to make decision every single day. My mouth, my mind are for the Lord. They are not for the devil. Every time you're g o i n g to open your mouth to say something, ask yourself: Is this for the devil or for the Lord? I'm g o i n g to use my mouth to speak the word. I'm g o i n g to use my mouth to praise the Lord, not to gossip people. 
I'm going to use my mouth to speak positive thing, not to speak cursing thing upon my children. Amen. Use my mouth in the way of the Bible. And not only that, all of the good stuff you have, your house, your car, your clothes, your iPad, your iPod, your computer, anything, the smartphone, you need to make a decision that I'm going to use all of these things for the kingdom of God. My car is a church-going car. My car is not a nightclub-going car or casino-going car. My car only go to church and go to work. I'm not going to drive my car to a casino. Amen? I'm going to use my money for the gospel. Amen? I'm not going to use my money to entertain sin and to do bad things. I will call everything in my life into the ministry. I'm going to use my strength for the work of God. And once you make that commitment that everything in my life is for righteousness, then everything in our life will take on the kingdom's significance, who take on the eternal value. Everything we do, we think, is this for the devil or for God? I'm going to spend this money for the devil or for God. I'm going to use this time for the devil or for God. Everything, you make decision every single day. And if you can do that, you can rule and reign, and you will not allow the devil to come in and put guilt on you. Amen? Everyone say, everything in my life. Is for the Lord. And after you make that decision, God say in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So, in other words, you reign if you live like that, you receive the gift of righteousness. You depend on the grace of God, the spirit of grace. And you make decision every single day not to yield to the devil, but yield to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you can reign by speaking. Whatever you buy on earth, heaven will support you. Whatever you lose on earth, heaven will support you. Lately, I got a lot of email and Facebook from people all over the world that they listen to our CD. Actually, uh, one of our members just emailed me interesting story that he owned a Thai restaurant and he witnessed to a man that he witnessed and shared the gospel. So he gave the CD to this man. He very skeptical about Christianity and about the things of God. So one day, he was, while he was sitting, I don't know, in the car or somewhere, I was not sure. He turned on the CD called Communion with the Holy Spirit. And when he was listening, at the end of the CD, I say, fire. And you know what happened to this man who was not a believer? The Holy Spirit came upon him. He began to cry and sob, brokenness, and he got saved. And he called this member of our church that he's going to show up in the church in a couple of weeks after he finished something that he commit on Sunday. We're going to see him soon. Now he talk like a Christian. <laughs> Why God support my word when I say in the city, fire, and he came down? Why when I lose the fire on earth, the fire came down? Heaven support me. And this is not only one example. Another Thai woman in northeast of Thailand, she got the CD. And then she listened. And at the end, I say, fire. She never saw me before. Demons start to come out of her in the home. Demon come out. And she was set free that day by just the word of a man in the CD. Why the heaven support pass aloud? Because I have been walking what I preached today. No condemnation. Use my body as an instrument of righteousness. I'm very careful not to sin against God in anything, my mind, my mouth, because I want to rule and reign in this life. And whatever I buy on earth, heaven will support. Amen? Hallelujah. So when your kids are sick, you can say, in Jesus' name, I command this sickness to go away. You can rule in your house. You can reign in your house. Amen? 
That's why we need to walk in the Spirit. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 26, the Bible says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is a command. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do these things that you wish. You do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You can see here again, the Old Testament, the law. You follow the letter written in the paper. But in the New Testament, we are not under the law, but we are under the Holy Spirit. The hand inside our life will move us. That's why we don't need to keep putting the paper on the wall. What are you going to do? Oh, one, two, three, four. But that one, two, three, four is inside us by the Spirit. And it just keeps moving on the inside of us. But we need to submit and yield to the Holy Spirit, not to the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, uh, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past. Well, I like Paul. Paul keeps preaching the same thing again and again every Sunday. He says, I told you in the past, I tell you now. So if you preach the same thing, you need to understand I follow Paul's example. I keep saying the same thing because people don't get it the first time. That those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. So this kind of thing of the Holy Spirit is not against the law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desire. If we live in the Spirit, if we are filled with the Spirit, following the Holy Spirit, let the Spirit of God lead us and we walk with Him. Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So in other words, if you want to rule and reign in life, listen carefully. This is a lifestyle we need to have. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Everything you do. Let me share this quickly with you. Not everything that looks spiritual, not everything that looks religious and spiritual are of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to walk in the flesh. Amen? We want to walk in integrity, faithfulness, love, purity. If you want to rule and reign in life, don't follow the flesh. The flesh may tell you, yell at him, mad at him. You say, no, 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 no. I crucify my flesh. I can follow the Holy Spirit. Then the devil cannot can condemn you. The devil cannot say, oh, you do the same thing I do. How can I listen to you? You need to walk in the Spirit every single day. I promise God that everything I do in this church, I will not do under the flesh. And I can do it because I'm a smart guy. You know, being a neurosurgeon is not dumb. I can use all of my intellectual ability to do everything to you. We call manipulation. But I don't do that. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to be a spiritual man. I don't want to use manipulation, controlling, threaten people. If you don't do this, you're going to be like this. This is all manipulation. We're going to have to walk by in love, in purity, in righteousness so that we can rule and reign in life. Amen? If we walk like that, the devil cannot step in to give us lies and confusions and deceitful ideas. We're going to walk right in the middle road of God, and we always have the protection of God. Amen? Let's look at another scripture, why we need to walk by the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now condemnation 
to those who are in Christ. A lot of people stop here. Yeah, I'm in Christ. I have no condemnation. If you live in condemnation, you cannot rule and reign. But don't stop the sentence there. The Bible say, "Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit." Let's start from the first sentence. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Just only this sentence alone, a lot of Christians flung the test. If you talk to a lot of Christian who never studied this kind of lesson, this is a very heavy subject, but I think it's good for you because I don't want you to live in condemnation. What does it mean, condemnation? Condemnation means you feel guilty, you feel ashamed, you feel that you are inferior, you feel that you are a bad person. Many Christians will say, "God doesn't love me." I'm just a poor old sinner. I have blown it many times. I make mistake last night. God doesn't love me anymore. I'm just a weak Christian. They keep saying that, and they say, "Do you know what I say?" Because I'm humble. It's not true. They are insulting the blood of Jesus Christ. Because if you repent and confess your sin, He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You don't need to live in condemnation. The Bible says, "In Christ Jesus, if you repent and confess your sin, you don't need to live in condemnation. You don't need to live in guilt and shame and have the feeling of being inferior to anybody. But you need to repent and confess your sin. Amen. The Bible says, when we confess, He is just and righteous. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Everyone say all." What does it mean? All. What does it mean? It mean all. It mean all. So when your unrighteousness are all clean up, how much unrighteousness do you have? So when God looked from heaven to you, He did not see even one sin. He did not see even one mistake. When you confess and repent. He will see the righteousness of God of Jesus Christ upon you. He look at you as clean as Jesus. Amen. R- Hebrew chapter eight verse twelve. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Don't remind God of your past weakness, your past mistake. Don't bring them up, because there is no more condemnation. God don't even remember. So if you try to bring to God, God, remember ten years ago, uh, you know, I yell at my wife, she cry and cry, I feel bad for her, and God said, "What? What happened ten years ago? I don't remember. Why you tell me? He does not remember what you did if you already repent ten years ago. So don't bring it back. And that is the trap of the enemy to keep reminding you of the past sin, and you still live in condemnation." And guilt and shame and inferiority complex all the time. Then you cannot rise up to fight the battle, to command the sickness to go away, to command Satan to get out of your home because you live in condemnation all the time. Roman chapter eight verse two, for the law of the spirit of life. You need to understand that when you see the word the spirit, you think about the grace, the power. Everyone says supernatural power. The Spirit of God gives us supernatural power, the grace that you don't deserve, you don't pay for it. It's free. You don't deserve that power or grace, so that you can live victoriously. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You remember the, at the beginning of the sermon, I said the word Satan, sin, death. You can notice that Paul keep repeating the same word again and again. It's about the two things: sin, Satan, death, condemnation, grace, righteousness, the Spirit, the freedom, no condemnation anymore. I need to choose this side: walking in the Spirit, walking in the grace of God. Amen. So, if we walk in the Spirit, God forgive us, and in His eyes, we are not a sinner anymore. 
We don't walk in condemnation. Why I have to preach this as an introduction today? This is introduction. I'm almost done. Next time we're going to go deeper detail about how to avoid condemnation. I'm going to teach you in detail how to get out from condemnation. Okay, this is just introduction today. Why? Because any amount of condemnation in your heart is going to rob your life out of the victory of God. I have committed many sins in my life, but today I know I'm. As clean as Jesus, I don't look back to the past sin anymore. That's why when I stand before somebody who have demon, I can say, "Get out of here," because I know I'm as clean as Jesus. If I still feel guilty, oh, those, that day, I say bad words. The devil gonna look at me and say, "You're the same. You're not better than me." But I can say I'm better than you, because I'm righteous. I have been made the righteousness of God by His righteousness. So I'm righteous. I can stand and look at the wind and the storm of my life. Stop. Amen. I can look at the demons and say, "Get out of here right now." If the devil attack my children, I say, "Get out of this house." I rule and reign. Because I'm righteous, amen. I'm not living in condemnation. Why don't we stop here and come back next time? Because if I teach too long, you'll be sleepy. Did you learn something today? In conclusion, take home message: condemnation is not good. Don't let condemnation rule your heart. You live as clean as Jesus. If you confess your sin and repent, God will cleanse all the unrighteousness. That is God's part. He did already by the blood of Jesus. He gave us the free gift of righteousness. But our part, we make a decision every single day when we wake up, every single minute, that I love God more than anything else. And I will let my body be an instrument of righteousness. I will not say yes to sin or to the devil. I will not entertain bad thoughts when the devil give to me. I'm going to get rid of it as soon as possible. And I will walk by the spirit. I'm not going to walk by the flesh. Amen. Anything is of the flesh. We say no. We're gonna walk by the Spirit, and you walk by the Spirit, you will have life. I tell you, it's not worth it to enjoy some sin that will entertain your lust for a few minutes, because it will turn around and bite you. Is that right? If you try to play with the tiger, what happened? Eventually, it's gonna bite you. So don't play with the tiger. Don't play with the lions. The lion gonna bite you. Therefore, I don't want to sin at all because I don't want number one that sin to destroy me. Two, I don't want that sin to follow into my children to have generational curses that they will do the same thing I do. If I flirt with woman, my son gonna flirt with woman. The same sin. So I have to keep myself pure and holy, and walk by the Spirit, so that I can rule and reign in this life. Amen. Is it a heavy subject? Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you so much, Lord, for your Word, and we thank you for the Holy Spirit, who gives us grace and power, unmerited favor. We don't deserve your grace, your power. Your supernatural help to walk in righteousness, to be what you want us to be, and to do what you ask us to do. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that move in the church, and we thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ 
that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And we receive the gift of righteousness by faith. We receive the abundance of grace, the power of the Holy Spirit, so that we can rule and reign in this life. We thank you, Father. We ask you, Lord, to remind your people of this truth every single day, that they will practice what they learn. From now on, everyone in this church will yield to the Holy Spirit. Will recognize what is the work of the flesh and what is the work of the Holy Spirit, and they will follow the Holy Spirit, and they shall walk in the grace of God. Thank you, Father. We pray, Lord, that this thing will go into our children. As parents in this church, we will teach our children. The truth of God, that we will walk in the Spirit as well. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. We have victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand up and sing as your prayer that the Holy Spirit will control your life. Yes, Lord. Let this song become your prayer. Why are you praying? Why are you singing? Ask Him to fill you. Ask Him to minister to you. Fill your life with His presence, with His grace. Give you faith and power to be slave to righteousness, not to the devil. Let's focus on the Lord. Thank you. 
Teach us, Lord, how to walk by the Spirit. Fill everybody in this church, Lord, with Your Holy Spirit. Teach us to walk with You, Lord. To hear the voice of the Spirit every day. To crucify the flesh. To follow the Holy Spirit. May Your Holy Spirit become so real to us, Lord, 24/7. Year, year to You, Spirit of the Lord, do Your work in me. How many people promise God that from today on you will walk by the Spirit? Amen. How many people raise your hand up and say, "God, I'm going to walk by the Spirit." Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Control my mouth, Lord. Control my heart, my mind, my action, my motives, my attitudes, Lord. Control everything I do, Lord. Love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Father, I pray, Lord, that you bless every family in this house. Everyone, I pray, Father, for the singles to find a godly mate, find somebody that you prepare for them, that both of them one day when they get married, they will serve God together. We pray for every couple, husband and wife, that they will live together in harmony, in understanding, in honor. In faith, husband and wife in this church will love one another, and they will be good example to their children. I pray, Father, that all the children in this house will not backslide, will not walk away from the kingdom of God. Oh Lord, I pray, Lord, that no cancer, no sickness, no blood disease, no Alzheimer, no nothing, no sickness can touch this church. Your people will be healthy, healthy, healthy. Will be prosperous. Will be successful, Lord. They all will go higher and higher in the things of God. Nobody will go downhill, but go higher and higher in the things of God, Father. We bless them, Father. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed to bless the nation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah! Everyone say, "I'm blessed." I'm blessed. <laughs> Amen. Turn to each other and say, "You are blessed. You are blessed." Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We trust that this message is ministered to you. If you would like more information about New Hope International Church or other teaching CDs, please contact us at 206-275-1042. You may also visit our website online at www.newhopeinternationalchurch.com. To them all gathered in your name, I lift to you this new praise song. All the wrongs I have ever done have been washed away by your only son. Bring me your tired, you said. Bring me your weak. Bring me your hungry masses. 
we seek your glory.